excited to see you. Today we have a very special visitor coming, and our special visitor is going to help us understand why sciences are related to each other. So something that I find fascinating is that biology is not just biology. There's chemistry, there's physics, there's all kinds of other disciplines that come into play. So we have decided to bring a special guest in to help us understand how biology and chemistry are linked. And there he is now. Hello, Welcome. how are you doing? This is Mike from Science with Mike. Thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem. Today we're going to talk about how biology and chemistry are linked, right? Okay, so sure. first we need you to get your lab coat on because safety first. Really? Yes, lab coat. Let's go, friend. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to wear a lab coat. It makes me feel dirty, actually. <laughs> All right. But it keeps us safe, right? Yeah, I guess. So we should wear safety glasses then. We probably should wear yeah. safety glasses. No, I like that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take uh, a lemon and we're going to connect um, electrodes to it and we'll have voltage and current and so uh, basically we need two electrodes. Um, this is a nail. It must be, um, or it's better, if it's a uh, galvanized nail that's coated with zinc. Zinc's very electropositive and it's very electron giving. Copper, on the other hand, is very electron taking and so when you have those two components in a battery um, you can have a voltage uh, pass through it. So we have to have different metals? Why do yes. we need to have different metals? Yeah, uh, because what you've got is you got zinc is generally very electron generous mm -hmm. and this is very electron taking. Actually there's electrolyte in there that reacts too but anytime you have that the electrons will flow from the electropositive metal to the electronegative metal and that's what causes voltage. And then the amount of electrons is the current. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go and jab. You're stabbing the lemon. I know. It's, uh, Ouch! That's okay. <laughs> it's life had purpose. That's right. I'm going to take a little incision here just to get my penny started. Can we try to see with a knife? No. Because <laughs> I drink too much coffee. It's not that I'm <laughs> violent. So, um, okay. There we have no electrons flowing yet because they're not connected by a wire, and if we connect them... So this through, would be like a battery that's not connected to... Like, anything. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like okay. just like this battery. Right. Okay. You know, like it's not doing anything yeah. because these two points aren't connected. Right. So, um, now, I always get it backwards. I get a lot of stuff backwards. So the, the positive side, what do we call the positive? I think um, the positive side, we're going to call the... <laughs> cathode and the negative side we're going to call the anode right. and then what will happen is if I do it backwards um, I will get I think negative oh, so that's that the thing is backwards. See, yep. as negative 0.969 I'm reading it upside down it like 0.969 volts something like that all right so we need to reverse we that. need to reverse these bad boys because we want the electrons to flow from the zinc to the copper yeah well they'll actually flow no matter which way you connect it it's just this thing's interpretation of positive it. Yeah. versus negative yeah ah, so now we got sense. 0.935 volts now what's so in the lemon why are we using the lemon so just for the fact that the, one of these electrodes is going to become more uh, positive and the other one's going to become more negative, and every negative's got to have a positive, so you need ions. Right. So every battery that you um, have in touches your life, like your car battery has sulfuric acid. Uh, this has, oh, well, you'd be more of the citric expert, acid. citric acid. Yeah, citric acid. Um, and, uh, you know, and here you have a paste of a bunch of different stuff. So you always need electrolyte with a battery, and that's why this works. If we just connected them by... Um, something that wasn't conductive, uh, you know, put something here non-electrolyte, it wouldn't do nothing. Okay, so, so we need to have that citric acid to help to draw the zinc off of the zinc. Yeah, basically what's got to happen is that the zinc anode mm -hmm. is producing more positive ions. Right. And you've got it yeah, kind of laid out right there. Yeah, I do. see the chemical reaction. There you go. Yeah, and so then, our zinc metal, right, that's our nail. Yep. So the citric acid helps to pull that positively charged zinc into the actual lemon itself, and it leaves behind those electrons, yeah. right? Yeah, and then and the then electrons. This is, right, this is the other side, so on this side, your cathode, you've got the hydrogen ions from the lemon, that's in the acid that's in the citric acid, is taking those electrons from that negative side, and it actually produces hydrogen gas, so we have to be careful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not, enough. Not, not enough. enough. I'll tell you why not fun. enough. 
what we're going to do is our project is we're going to try to light these LEDs. Ooh, one of these LEDs. Pretty. Pick a color. Let's use blue. Blue? I like okay. blue. Um, so, however, this requires 3 volts and it requires um, 20 milliamps. Okay. So right now we've got less than a volt. Right. And we, uh, well, let's check on how many um, amps we have. Okay. okay. This is actually the part I don't know, I don't know how many amps these produce. Yeah. So I've got to connect this up to here. And then, oh, Ooh, stop. Fancy. Yeah, it is fancy, isn't it? Can you see what that says right 0 .08, there? 0 0.08, 0 0.07. That's and not need, much at all. We need 20. Yeah. So this won't work. <laughs> but what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll prove that it won't work. Okay. And um, so uh, what we're going to do, though, to get our voltage up right. is we're going to need multiple, multiple cells. Okay. So uh, I have a good example sure. of multiple cells. This is a 9-volt battery. And uh, what happens with a 9-volt battery is each there's really a bunch of different lemons and they're not real lemons but I mean you know we have about a little bit less than a volt here right and if we connect multiple ones we can multiply that voltage if we connect them in what we call series okay okay so uh, this is just basically six little batteries inside here and I have an example of one that's cut away and um, so you'll see there's so that's six what that looks like in there that's well there's different designs but right. that's what it look like if you were to cut it open split it in half and we shouldn't cut batteries open um, no, not it's really. Not idea. Um, you know, even though we do have a lab coat on, if you, uh, <laughs> we need safety goggles. For we that. need that. Yeah, I did when I was a kid. I actually jabbed a battery and got stuff in my eye. My eye! And that was. I'm that's, not I wasn't very smart when I was a kid. <laughs> Usually, 1.5 volt battery has just one cell. All right, and this has actually six little cells in it. That's why they go bad so quickly, actually, because ah. the the size of the cell is basically the charge and how much electrons you can provide. So, uh, what are the chemicals that are in batteries now? Is zinc? Oh, and zinc, always, almost always zinc, but now, you know... Manganese oxide? Is yeah, it? manganese oxide, but now, you know, we're getting into the point where we you know, have lithium. Right, and those and are rechargeable? Yeah, they recharge to a point. Right. You have limited number of recharges, but okay. then you get three volts out of it. Okay. So you don't need as many cells. Okay. Because uh, if you have stuff that runs on three volt volts, you could have, you know, two 1.5 volt cells or you can have three volt cells. So that's one of the things. Lithium's very electropositive. Okay. Much more than zinc. Okay. Actually. So that's why it's a better choice. Yeah. It's probably more expensive though. There you Zinc's go. Zinc's pretty cheap. So there's all sorts of factors involved. And now you'll see that with, you know, 0 0.06 milliamps, uh, it's not like we're gonna be walking around lemons <laughs> on our uh, lemon flashlight. <laughs> that <laughs> Something would be like cool. That. that would be kinda cool. It'd I be like attention it. getting. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so. It smell good. Yeah. Now, how about if we, you want to prove first that it doesn't have to be a lemon? We could use sure. pickle over yeah, here yeah. and then maybe the potato. That. Yeah. All right, let's do the pickle first. Okay. We always, on Science with Mike, we like to Play with abuse pickles. pickles. I love pickles. Well, you know, they. You mean to pickles? No, not really. They, we made, I made them a character. And, uh, <laughs> I should have done that. They were Bill and Jill Pickle. You oh, can check it out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Excellent. Shame. Motion. That's right. um, so then if we just connect this the same way, now we might get a little different voltage because... Let me help you with that. Yeah, I didn't do it right. And I also <laughs> drank like five cups of coffee, so I'm <laughs> shaking. We actually got Oh, look at that pickle. Amps. Yeah. Nice. So it must be that the pickle is much more conductive. Perhaps. I should have brought a bunch there. of pickles. Yeah. Maybe we, we could connect them. We could do multiple things. I think they use, there's no biological reason that pickles and lemons Can't get along. don't get along, right? They're both <laughs> they're both fruits. That's right. Right? They provide energy. Yeah. yeah. Do you okay. want to do four? Sure. And see if we can get let's put this back to see what our voltage is now. Okay. I'll start. And uh, theoretically we should get four volts. Ish. Four ish volts. And also see what I did? Let's I just around. pushed it in like that more. Ooh. And I just made a voltage go up to 0.8. Oh, it's exposed to more of the juice. I think that's yeah. the, the thing, and it's making better contact yeah. with it. So we're getting 0.8 volts. So if we do that's four good. lemons, so let's squish them up a little. We bit. should be able to get two and a half volts, and then we can see if we're going to light this for copper. So, so are you making a circuit? I'm making a yeah, nice. it's a series. A series. A series circuit of batteries. Just to add up their uh, mm -hmm. 
I probably got all my colors wrong and all the electricians are just freaking out. Freaking out on us. Okay, so I think I have now I'm ready to connect my voltmeter to gotcha. mm -hmm. this and we'll see if I goofed it up or not. Negative. Um, negative. But also Switch not those. not adding the voltage, so I did something wrong. So this is what we call in science. An experiment. I did something wrong. <laughs> so what did I do wrong? So now how come that's point just point three, 3 volts? That's good. That's not. That's okay. Millivolts. It's, it's not. Okay. It's better. All right. So let's let's connect this guy to this guy. Okay, so now it says point three volts. Now you're going to connect that one up. And well, you know, it says point four something. So that's good. So we're adding to the voltage. See if right. they're all pushed in there. Point four something. So do we want to do that with another lemon? Let's try that. And you know, like, really what you'd think is like we should have rehearsed this. Now that's at 0.4, and there you go, 0.5. So they're not making good connection, but we are multiplying our right. voltage. Right, right. Is that Connect safe? it like this. Is it safe? <laughs> I don't, I think so. I think I want safety goggles. The other way. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even do that. One more left. If we change the metal. Oh, excellent, yes. We should be able to get more volts. Volt right there. See? I told you. Yeah, that's a that's a volt. Okay, so then so we got pennies. So apparently some pennies, the newer pennies have less copper. They're only on the surface, right. they're plated. Maybe right. there's a break in there. Perhaps. And you, the zinc is coming through. So we are getting better. So we're doing better with wire. I guess I was thinking it would act like its own connection, but Okay, so but let's just, we're going to cut a lot out. This is going to have to edit this down to an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take some magnesium. Right. And magnesium is a little bit more electropositive, and we should get more than just 0.9 volts by switching to magnesium. So out with the nail that's coated with zinc. In with a better metal. And there you go. That's 1.8 volts. Well, that's why they use lithium. Right. Because that's the same effect. So Cheaper is lithium batteries. even more electro, is it negative or positive? Positive. Electro-positive than the magnesium? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they have some, there's something called reduction potential that, um, if I recall, the reduction potential of lithium is like negative, point three, negative 3 volts, and this is negative 1.67. That's the chart, right? That's the, there's a big old chart. Yeah. And then zinc is like negative 0.76. Copper is positive 0.34. Okay. So, you know, theoretically you just take and subtract those numbers and that's how many volts you get. But right. There's a lot of factors like what the concentration is and, oh well. I just, this feels like uh, an episode <laughs> of Julia Child, except, you know, except I burn something for that's a little okay. while. There. That's okay. You know, okay. no one screws up on Julia Child. So I wanted to mention before we finish um, the mnemonics that we had talked about before. Yeah. So for our students to help us remember what oxidation and reduction is. Again, really important concepts in chemistry, but also biology. Yeah. So I often use um, these two, and you said you use these two as well. I, do, I like Leo the lion goes grr, personally. You know personally. what? Funny thing, for a long time, I thought that Leo was a dog. And I could not get it out of my head that Leo was a dog. And I was like, why would a dog say grr? And I had this epiphany in class just this semester that Leo is a lion. Hello. It could be. Yeah, so. I mean, it could be a dog. I, it, my dog says grr, apparently. We want it to be a line. So here, we, Leo is lose electrons oxidation and gain electrons reduced or reduction. Mm -hmm. um, and then oil rig is something I learned from a student too. So oxidation yep. is loss, reduction is gain. Um, so these are very useful ways to remember oxidation and reduction because it's, it's difficult to remember those. Um, so if you have those mnemonics, it's very helpful. There's one more thing that I like to tell my students mm -hmm. is that, you know, there's anode and cathode with mm -hmm. a battery. Mm -hmm. Anode is oxidation. Those are two vowels. Right. And then cathode is reduction. Those are two consonants. So that's another oh, way that's to very good. keep it all straight. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's this been fun. It's been yeah. so much fun. Yeah. I love it. Maybe we can blow something up next time. Not coming for dissections. E no. no, no, no. After your story. But you know what we learned is that uh, when life hands you lemons, you make, you make batteries. <laughs>